up hearing my parents' stories of near-death experiences and surviving the genocide in Rwanda. To me, that was reaffirming that there is a special reason why I'm here. I have seen the impact of education in rebuilding my country from ashes. Education innovation is something that I hold dear to my heart. My parents really value hard work. They both had working class parents, and for them, education was their way up. I was looking at the traditional engineering schools because I love to build things. I wanted to invent, I wanted to create, I wanted to be excited, and I wanted to be passionate about where I was going. That's what drew me here. Higher education in Kosovo is free. Even though Minerva's tuition is less expensive than other universities in the U.S., it is still an annual income for the average family in Kosovo. I worked very hard to first be accepted, but then it was even more difficult when it came to how am I going to afford it, how am I actually going to get here. Getting accepted to Minerva, to me, it was just my dream coming true. I remember waking up to an email that had my financial aid package. That's when it hit me that I'm attending Minerva. To me, that was like the deciding moment because I wouldn't have been able to attend without the financial aid. It was just a very happy, happy moment for me and my whole family. I'm a web development intern at Minerva's headquarters. There you go. Yeah, check out that. It's that guy. Not only does it help me pay for the college, but it's opened up this whole new way of having an influence on my own education. Finding out that Minerva is going to support financing my tuition, my living costs, and offering me an internship opportunity really made the final decision for me. <laughs> There's something different here because suddenly no opportunity is closed off. You feel like every wall and barrier that you had before has been challenged and knocked down. The diversity of students at Minerva has impacted me so much. They challenge me not only because of their different points of view, but also their compassion. The panels would be about yeah, real exactly. issues. Exactly. If we're doing I love that. So if, yeah. if you're when Minerva about, students about leave this institution, I believe it in my heart that they are going to change the world for the better. The question for the supper club is, if you... Even up until now, it's been much about growing and the pain that comes with it. My passion is to improve the quality of education in Rwanda, making sure that people have access to quality education will not only build a new generation that is educated and who are critical thinkers, but also a generation who will be shaping the future of the country. <laughs> it pains me that there are so many injustices in my country. This makes me very happy that you guys are all here. Half of the population in Kosovo lives under the national poverty line. I'm very passionate about alleviating that situation. Without the support of donors for financial aid, most of us wouldn't have even been able to come. This has opened up so many opportunities for all of us. There's something you get when making, and it's that you realize that you actually have a lot of power in your own hands. I'm playing an active role in my education, and I'm using my hands to build this university. So if I have one message to you today in this conference is not to think about how you apply particular technologies to make what currently happens at universities better, but how to stop thinking about anything that is currently happening and start thinking about what we want to have happen. What is it that society requires of our institutions of higher education. 
And when we figure that out, then think about how you can apply technology to enable that to occur. Thank you so much for your time, and I'm happy to take some questions. I'd like to thank you for having lectured on education part rather than technology only. I think if you're invited here because the school is known as, the university is known as a technologically advanced, but I would, I'd like to thank you that you have stressed the point of education philosophy than the technology only. And my question is, uh, I'd like to be brief. Um, you, seeing the way that you teach the concepts, it looks to be that the number of concepts and the quantity of the knowledge should be uh, reduced than uh, what we have taught in traditional university. And I'd like to ask you if you have any design or consideration about the number of uh, concepts or the quantity of knowledge. Thank you. Yeah, um, I didn't mention this uh, in, in the design, but if you look at Minerva courses, they're far, far fewer than a traditional university uh, uh, offers, and that's for, for two reasons. If you look at the traditional university uh, course offering, they're largely separated into two types of classes, neither of which we teach. So class number one, which is the bulk of the time students spend at universities, is in the introductory level information dissemination courses. Um, it does not make sense for students to pay tuition, for governments to pay subsidies to teach basic physics, economics, biology, chemistry, because it's all available online, all for free. Uh, and the idea that you would pay thousands of dollars uh, to have a student sit in Economics 101 lecture is criminal. It just doesn't make any sense. Um, you know, in, in the United States, as an example, in the University of California system, 95 thousand students a year take psychology 101, okay? If you look at the average tuition rates in, in California for the in-state, that means that on average, students are paying $2,000 for each one of those classes. That means that in California, only in the University of California system, $200 million a year is spent on Psych 101, Right? Think about what that means across all of the United States. Think about what that means around the entire world. Tens of billions of dollars spent on teaching one course which can be read in a book, seen online for free. Right? And so that's the first part of education which we think has to be reformed because economically it doesn't make sense to reproduce the same exact content over and over and over again for every institution. The second group of courses are what we often refer to as uh, faculty hobbies, right? So you'll see, go to one university and you'll see that they will have for a course on the Renaissance gardens of Italy, and then you'll have another course that'll offer uh, uh, in a different university is the gardens of Victorian Britain. Well, why is, in one university, they think that the Victorian British gardens are more important to study than Renaissance Italian gardens? Well, it's because the professor happens to do the research on that area. Well, this is a little bit absurd, right? Because these are more esoteric and more related to what the professor is interested in teaching, less about what the student needs to learn. And so at Minerva, we have two different kinds of courses. One kind of course that we teach is what we refer to as seminal ideas. And these are habits or concepts either across all fields, in a particular cluster of fields or at the intersection of fields, without mastering these ideas, you simply cannot call yourself a domain expert. It is impossible. And so they are boiled down and distilled to the core ideas that you must master. So that, those are the courses that we have constructed centrally and then offer. We then flip... And for the very upper level courses within your particular area of study, we have the students actually decide what it is that they want to study. And then we pair them with the appropriate professor, three students at a time, three students to one professor, and then enable them to construct the syllabus together and explore that. 
And so they do that through tutorials, which is what I described. They have a capstone project, which is student-directed, or practica, which is where they go and actually work in an institution in the real world and apply what they learn day to day. So we think that that's a better uh, combination of what universities should be focused on and that the other stuff, maybe a university will certify or verify that you've learned that knowledge, but frankly, the best way to certify that is by actually taking the seminal courses because you have to learn the basic knowledge in order to apply it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Matrix是一个非常重要的能力，它的基本的能力，它的基本的能力，它的基本的能力，它的基本的能力，它的基本的能力，它的基本的能力，它的基本的能力，它的基本的能力，它的基本的能力，它的基本的能力，它的基本的